Hi guys. So um, I want to talk about the super moon, blue moon, full moon in Leo, blood moon, lunar eclipse. What the fucking fuck, right? Um, so the way I'm going to do this video, and before we get too far, I just want to apologize how ugly this shirt looks on film. It's not this ugly in person. Um, I mean, maybe sort of ugly, but it's not nearly as ugly as it looks on film. So I hope you don't find my shirt offensive. I'm going to do this like I did the last video, or I'm just going to fucking wing it. Um, because here's the deal. Even though a lot of people didn't watch the cancer moon video, the people who did watch it, um, commented and emailed me and said, you know what? I got a lot out of that. So maybe there's something to just go in with the flow. And so we're going to do it that way. Now, as you know, I am not an astrologer. Um, I find the concept of astrology to be valid in certain ways, but also, um, it's just like a massive undertaking and it's very confusing. And I don't know that I personally have the focus to understand what is a sextiled, squared, retrograde, um, north node, south node coupling in the 15th house of Aquarius, okay? Like, for me, that just sounds like a totally different foreign language. In fact, I honestly believe it would be easier for me to learn a foreign language than astrology. But then why the hell am I doing this video, right? The reason why is because as a tarot card reader, I do see astrological things happening. I see themes when I do these um, when I do these readings for each sign. And the reason why I do readings for each sign is to um, kind of give everybody a reading like in a specific category. But themes emerge, right? So then I know that something bonkers is happening with astrology. So um, getting to the point now. <laughs> so today I'm going to talk about the super moon, the full moon in Leo, the blood moon, and the lunar eclipse that's all happening combined at one time on January 31st. I think that's a Wednesday, so that'll be like a real cool midweek energy. Now, if you have not watched the Cancer Moon video, you might want to go back and watch that video before you come back to this video. And the reason being is because some of these energies are going to piggyback and they will make more sense for you in this video. If you don't want to, that's fine. You'll still get the um, nuts and bolts of it. I was going to say the milk and cookies of it, maybe because that's more my personality than nuts and bolts, but but yeah, you'll get the milk and cookies of the video um, either way. So where do I want to start? I will start by telling you um, why am I authorized to give you this information, right? If I just told you I don't do astrology. Um, because when I notice these themes, when I recognize these themes, then I go and I research hard. And I'm like, okay, why this though? Why that? And I try to figure out why these themes are happening. So I read a bunch of articles. I watch a bunch of videos, that kind of thing. Um, I will tell you in regards to the blood moon aspect of the super full Leo blood moon, blue moon, lunar eclipse, that um, in that regard, the only real information I got was from NASA. And um, that's because if you search blood moon, all you're going to find is doomsday prophecies. So we're going to start the video there. Are these doomsday prophecies that there's like all of these videos and articles about valid? Are they accurate? Is the end of the world near? No. No, it isn't. And let me tell you why. Okay, because the blood moon doesn't mean bloodshed. First of all, it just means that there is a blood colored shadow that the moon is casting. Okay. Now, the other thing is there's like all the stuff in the Bible, like the moon is going to be red and then the blah, blah, blah. Um, and so there's all these people saying like, oh, we're going to go to nuclear war with North Korea because Trump's an asshole. And, you know, there was this prediction that there's going to be an asshole in office and then the blood moon. Um, Y'all. In 2014 and 2015, there were like four blue moons, or not blue moons, red moons, blood moons, all in a row. And people were trying to link it back to the Torah. They were trying to link it back to the Bible. And the thing is, is the world didn't end, okay? So, I mean, whether you're religious or not, that's not the point. The point is, the blood moon is not something to be afraid of. It's just the color of the shadow that it casts. 
Okay, that's the information in regards to that aspect of it. And so when people are talking about it, don't let it scare you. Okay, there might be other reasons to be afraid, but they're not related to the blood moon. And so um, I just want to make that super clear because if you do Google blood moon, okay, I put in blood moon January 2018 and the first three pages of YouTube videos and the first two or three pages of um, aside from the article from NASA on Google for just articles, we're all doomsday prophecies. And this is like a big fear that people have, like to the point where I saw um, a religious scholar's Snapchat that I follow um, quite a few days ago, where he was like, all these people are Snapchatting me and sending me messages on social media asking me if the world's gonna end. He's like, bro, it's not gonna end. Because like the, per um, Islamic scripture, like the end of the world should take like the the whole apocalypse thing. And it doesn't matter what your religion is, but it's saying that it should take like a period of 200 years. So even if it was the end of the world starting right now, you're not gonna live long enough to see the actual end of the world. So this moon is not gonna fuck you up, okay? So that's all I wanna say about the blood moon aspect. Um, now we'll get into the actual things that you need to know, just that that's cleared away. Okay, so what is a blue moon? A blue moon, um, you know how people say like, oh, it only happens once in a blue moon because it is a rare event. And that's why I also chose the blue background. Isn't it pretty? Um, so how, why is it rare? What is it? How can the moon be blue and red at the same time? Is the moon gonna be purple? It's not. All it means is that there's two full moons in one month. So we had one in the beginning of the month and now we have one here on the 31st. And that only happens once in a blue moon, right? That's what it's about. Um, so it is a rare event when we would have two full moons in one month. Um, and so when this happens, what happens is that it like amplifies the energy of a full moon. So we'll come back to that concept in a little bit. Um, but, you know, essentially, wh what else do I want to say about the blue moon? Let me look at my notes. Um... I don't think that much. I don't think there's that much I want to say about the blue moon specifically, except for that it's amplifying everything. Um, I want to talk more about the full moon in Leo in general, and then um, also about the eclipse that's happening, the lunar eclipse, because this is so much shit at once. Okay, so yeah, that's about, oh, you know, um, no, I think that's all I wanted to say about the blue moon. So yeah, okay, now let's talk about the full moon. As you know, full moons are like about new beginnings, right? They're new starts, things like that. And so as I was saying, a blue moon amplifies things times three. So full moons are already powerful, right? Now it's like three full moons at once because it was twice in a month. So with this, oh, and it's a super moon. I forgot to mention that, which just means that the moon is closer to the earth, which is also gonna amplify things. All right. So, um, and when, when we have a super moon, it doesn't mean that the moon has extra special qualities. I mean, otherwise, other than that, because it's closer to the earth, it's, um, energies are maybe a little bit stronger. It's kind of, it, it looks really big. That's it. <laughs> the moon looks bigger. Um, it's going to look especially big if you live in Hawaii and it's going to, um, you'll be able to best see the eclipse. Like if you're somewhere further West, like in Hawaii or Alaska or something like that. than if you're on the East coast, like New York city, which you probably can't even hardly see the moon there because all the lights, but okay. So in regards to the full moon, um, full moons bring things to harvest, right? And now this is why I wanted you to go back and watch that Cancer Moon video again, um, because the Cancer Moon video was like, okay, here's the energies, here's what's going on. But then when that Capricorn energy kind of hit in the Capricorn New Moon, kind of hit in the Cancer Moon video, like throughout the month of January, it was like preparation time. Okay, let's think, let's get organized, let's get our ducks in a row, because this energy is going to hit, right? This full moon eclipse. Leo energy, where it's super and it's blue and bloody. Um, oh, that was another thing. Common misconception. People think that everybody's going to get their period. I saw, legit, I saw an article like this on the blood moon. Um, not everyone will. Not everyone even gets a period, first of all. And if you are 
the kind of person who gets your period on a full moon or a new moon, congratulations, you are super spiritual. You're connected to spirit. That's all that that means. Okay? All right. So, um, where was I going with that? So, full moons. Um, they're kind of about completion and new beginnings, right? So, with new moons, if you haven't seen my full moon versus new moon video, oh, you wouldn't have seen it because that's only on Patreon. You'll see it next year. It'll show up on your playlist here. But <laughs> um, for now, so those of you who are Patreons, hey, check out that video. Uh, but but what I was going to say is, uh, you know, they kind of bring things to ends to completion. Um, but what they do is they bring things up from our self, from our subconscious, right? So like a seed, for example, you know, you've got your ground right here, you planted a seed, and then um, you kind of forget about it. And you walk over the ground and it rains and it snows and it whatever. And then whoop, it kind of sprouts up. That's a full moon. That's what happens on a full moon. So it's like all of a sudden, whoa, what the fuck is that? It's a flower or it's a weed, okay? So we're going to be realizing that um, all of a sudden, these deep truths, like, whoa, there was something under there. <laughs> you know, whoa, I totally forgot about that. Um, you might be recognizing um, big truths about yourself. You might be realizing um, somebody else's true character. You might realize that you are in the wrong job. You know, you might realize um, all sorts of things, but deep inner truths are coming to surface with a full moon times three because it's a blue moon times two because it's a super moon times two more because it's a lunar eclipse. So what's that math times six times times 12 magnified energy. Okay, so. Um, it's like all about our soul's inner truth. And this is going to correlate a lot to that whole Leo aspect when we start talking about that. So what else do I want to say about the full moon itself? Um, yeah, you know, like the whole concept of understanding people's true nature, whether that's your own or somebody else, can be a good thing or it can be a bad thing. It's going to depend a little bit on your own choices moving forward. And that'll make a little bit more sense here in a minute. So... Um, full moon. Um, one thing about this full moon is that, you know, full moons in general are a time for us with, you know, discovering that inner truth and all of a sudden these things are popping to surface that we understand that we have the opportunity to change and that um, it's a good time to start achieving. Now, that's what I was talking about with that Capricorn new moon is if you realize that with the last full moon in Cancer, if you got in touch with your feelings and you're like, oh man, a change has to happen and you started preparing for that moving forward, then now this will be a little bit easier for you because you have some sense of direction. Now, all of the planets are going forward. Nothing right now is retrograde. So we're not looking back at all. We're on a super forward trajectory, okay? But you get to decide which way you're going and how fast you're going. Because with all of this energy and everything moving forward, if you can super speed ahead towards your goals, towards the things that you want, living your inner truth, or you can stay where you are and you can keep living, you know, your past over and over. But if you decide that you're not going to make the changes that have become very real and true for you, then you're just going to be making the same mistakes and you're going to live in a cycle. And the reason why is because like the whole point of us coming to earth, right, is to learn and grow. Okay, to express like to discover our true nature and express that. And you know, um, I saw somebody post on Facebook today, change yourself and change the world. And I was like, you know what, that's beautiful. And that's such a um, season of Aquarius, which we're coming into energy, where it's all about community. And it's all about, you know, the worldwide view. But it's starting in Leo, which is about self first. So change yourself and therefore change the world, make it a better place. So um, your, prob your inner purpose probably has something to do with that, you know? Um, setting like an example and showing other people um, how to live just by being a role model. Okay, so like I said, that can be good or bad for you. And 
you know, when we are not making the decisions that put us on that path, which is going to help us move a lot quicker. Like if you, if you decide to break up with somebody during this moon phase, you're going to get over it a lot quicker. You're going to do your healing a lot quicker. Um, but if you don't, you're just going to stay in this energy again and again and again, because you're going to be the same shit's going to happen. Like, Oh, I'm going to stay with this person because, um, you know, they want to change. And even though they cheated on me six times, I think they're going to change this time. Well, guess what? They might for a little while, but they're going to cheat on you again. And they're going to do it again and again and again and again until you fucking learn to move on. And that's the point. That's this whole full moon energy that is really amplified. It gives you more power and momentum to move forward with the things that you want. So don't be surprised. If um, all of a sudden you just have this like urge to sell your car, to move your home, to quit your job and start your own business, the time is right for that. I'm not saying to be totally irresponsible and just like, you know, um, like that meme where the guy throws his hands up in the air, all his paperwork, he's like, fuck it all. And you're like, just kidding, I need these, right? Um, some of you might be like, oh, fuck it all and do something different. And that's good because you're supported by spirit in that this month. But, like, don't be an idiot, right? You have to have discernment. And and so that's the thing, is the Leo side of this energy, with the Leo full moon in the season of Aquarius, it's like, that's that passion and that enthusiasm to do it. But then the Aquarius is more analytical because it's an air sign and it's more like, oh, okay, um, but let's be smart. Okay, so you're going to make better, good decisions. But it does, it is a choice. And now, sometimes... Like last month with the cancer stuff, it's like if you don't do this, the universe is going to kind of force you as far as dealing with emotions and things like that. In this specific moon phase, this is more a choice. It's more of a decision. The universe isn't going to force you. It's going to make everything, um, it's going to give you a lot of awareness as to what's going on. It's going to show you a lot about yourself and other people, but it's going to be your decision whether you want to stay in that energy, keep doing the same, or move the fuck on towards something bigger, brighter, and more suited for you. Okay, so here's the warning. If you decide to stay in the energy that you're in, then you can expect to stay there for a minimum of six months, probably up to three years. It's going to be a lot harder to make these changes if you don't take advantage of this energy. Okay, and so those of you who did the Capricorn New Moon stuff, you're going to be suited, like, you're going to be in a better position to really get the ball rolling. Like, if you set your goals, if you made your plans, you set your intentions, you made your checklist, like, you got everything going the way that you needed to, you got super fucking organized, you're going to be, like, running with this energy, okay? So good for you. For those of you, a lot of you probably don't know this, but right now I have a Capricorn goal setting special that ends on the 31st when it's the full moon all of this stuff because I was like you know what you better have that shit in order before then so fuck it like let's move on um you'd only know about that I guess if you go to my website or if you're um on my email list or if you're a patreon member because they always get like coupons for specials and stuff but uh oh and by the way if you're a patreon member don't forget to use your coupon code because some of you got this special and you didn't use it so um, you should have, because that was a huge savings. Anyway, um, I think I'm, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna extend that out a week. So if you need help, like kind of figuring out where your focus should be, I'll, I'll, I think I'm gonna extend that out until February seventh. So, just because I'm making this video now and I see how important it is, <laughs> make myself a note to seven. Okay, so sorry, back to what I was talking about. No. Um, remember, you can't let new in if you're holding on to the past because you haven't created an open space for new opportunities to come in. Now, with this um, Aquarius season, this energy, Aquarius stuff is all about like abundance. There will be more abundance for everybody, okay? It will be more fun. It will be more creative. But I need you to focus on the Leo side of things in this full moon energy before we just like kind of relax into the Aquarius phase. Um, and that Aquarius energy is going to hit towards the end of February, I think, mid to end 
of February. So in regards to all this Leo stuff, um, basically here's the thing. Oh, you know what I forgot to tell you? If you're resisting that change, because I'm looking at my notes here, um, you're going to create unnecessary struggle. You know, if you're not getting on that, um, I'm kind of viewing it like a lazy river, right? Like <laughs> you can get into the lazy river without an inner tube and you just be like walking slow or you can get into it with an inner tube and you can just go and it'll be easy and it'll be fast and you'll get to the, to the end of the river a lot quicker. Um, but so anyway, if you're trying to walk backwards or stay still, it's going to be a struggle against the current, right? So, um, it's like the universe will keep popping up all of these things. If you feel negative about things, um, you're going to start to feel more negative. If, and you're going to actually end up to be kind of depressed throughout the month of February if you're resisting change, okay? Now, um, basically, you're going to be really dramatic and you are going to be self-sabotaging if you can't just like embrace this and go with the flow. So that's what I wanted to say about that. So... Now we're going to talk about the whole Leo aspect of the full moon. And I'm sorry, I know this video is going to be like a thousand years long. There's just so much shit to cover. By the way, I hate tea. I think it's disgusting. But I went to this healing expo and some guy, he um, took my pulse and he was like, you're living your sole purpose and everything's great. And... Um, you know, something about how spirit likes it that I pray out loud, because I do do that. And um, I need to drink black tea twice a day. I'm struggling to drink it even twice a week. I don't like tea, but I bought myself some. And this one has peach in it, because the first black tea I came across had cinnamon in it, and I'm allergic to cinnamon, and I didn't want to die. So I got this one. And what's amazing about it is so it has peach in it, and then when I went to put it in the cup, I realized it's in the shape of a triangle, like the tea bags are triangles. And I meditated before bed last week and I, I saw a peach triangle and I was like, what the hell is that about? Synchronicity, nothing's an accident. So here I go forcing this shit down. Mm. Ugh, it's disgusting. It is seriously so gross. If you have a suggestion on how to make tea less gross, you can put it in the comments. That would be fantastic. Okay, so um, let's talk about the Leo aspect. Okay, so Leos, what are we known for? Um, drama sometimes, but um, you know, like more of the creative side of things. Um, creativity, fun, joy, um, enthusiasm, passion, you know, that fire. And so as I'm like researching all of this stuff about this moon energy, I start tying this all back to the Empress. Now, yes, I know that the Leo card is strength. Okay. We know that. Um, and you know, with the whole Aquarius thing, the infinite abundance is a great omen. But a lot of people, when they look at the Empress card, they tie it back to Leo. Why? Because the Empress card, sorry, I'm looking for the Emperor as well because I want to make a comparison for you. I should have done this before I hit record. But like I said, I'm swinging it in the flow. There it is. Okay. So a lot of people look at this Empress card and they, and they see it as a very Leo energy. Okay. She's got bigger hair than some of the other queens in the deck. She's totally in control. She's living from her heart chakra. She's like got this very feminine energy. Um, she's sexy. She's excited. But at the same time, people um, often think that she's like, people. some people believe that the Empress is pregnant in, in this deck. Um, I don't necessarily see that. But, um, you know, like her legs are definitely more open, though, than some of the other ones. So um, I like to joke that this is the slut card, even though she's not a slut. It's like um, people wish she was because they're drawn to her. <laughs> it's kind of what I get. But um, tarot card lessons aside, that's not what I wanted to talk about, is it's um, she's very mothering. She's known for her nurturing nature, okay? People, like all of the queens in the deck, they look to her for guidance, for love, for support. 
Now, why is the emperor coming up here, even though it has nothing to do with Leo's? Um, well, he shows up here because they're a pair, right? They're a team. And I want you to see the difference. If you're familiar with tarot at all, you know that the emperor is more like domineering and in control and he's serious and he's wise and she's like more, um, she's still in control and people still respect her and they like her opinion, but she's more like loving and nurturing and um, fun. <laughs> I mean, even just look at the backgrounds of the card. You know, she's joy and happiness with this yellow, even though she's, you know, powerful. And he is um, a little bit scary with that fear chakra orange there, right? So the Empress energy is kind of what we want to embrace. Um, we know our self-worth. We've got this crown on our head. We are deciding to be happy. We are powerful. We are nurturing, yet we're still creative, okay? She's emotional, and her emotions um, that she, even though it doesn't encompass like her whole life because she's more sturdy and stable than that, it doesn't like overwhelm her. Um, her emotions are what makes everything around her grow. Like look at this wheat or whatever the hell it is, and all these the the forest behind her, right? The the nurturing emotional side of her is what makes everything around her grow. And people love her for that. And so that's the energy that you need to embrace first. You're very um cuz everybody's got a little bit of every sign in their personality. Everybody's got masculine, everybody's got feminine. So you're going to focus on your very Leo qualities and try to bring more of those out, okay? So Leos have been known to be bossy or selfish. Um, as a, like a negative side of things. So they're saying this month with all of this moon energy, you are going to want to be selfish, um, but not in like a way that harms other people that only affects your own needs. So do I need to work less hours and spend more time with my children for my emotional health? Okay, I'm going to be selfish and I'm going to find a way to do that. I'm going to get a new creative idea and I'm going to run with that and it will be successful because not only do I have the drive and the passion with that Leo energy, but I have this um, Aquarius energy that's guaranteeing abundance to all of us so long as you put the work in, okay? Now, um, you know, here's the thing. You're going to have to love yourself first because as a, in this energy, because when the Aquarius energy starts to take over and replaces that Leo energy, and it's like a stronger force, the Aquarius energy is about community and friendships and things like that. But how can you focus on being a really great friend and changing the world, like we've mentioned with that quote before, if you're not complete and whole first? If I wasn't selfish and didn't decide like, you know what, I'm going to take this off of my schedule, I'm going to take this off of my schedule, and I'm going to pencil in time for friends, um, I'm not going to be able to be mindful of like my time with them and really enjoy friendships and, you know, family time if I have all these other things on my list of things to do still, then my, my attention is split. So, I mean, I'm guilty of this. I take my kids to swimming lessons and I'm like working from my phone constantly. I'm like, okay, edit this picture for Instagram, do this, answer this email. And um, I'm not like watching them swim until one of them goes, mom, watch this, you know, that kind of a thing. So um, being more present and mindful is going to be important as this month progresses, but we've got to get our own shit together first. And we have to be very selfish and we need to find time for joy and happiness. So selfish in regards to what makes me happy, what makes me joyful, what makes me laugh and smile and all of those things because we are casting out that negative energy, right? So that I can be a better friend, so I can be a better parent, so I can have a better quality of life because I'm not going to live very long if I'm not happy if I'm stressed out, if I'm not living from my authentic self, which is what this whole blue moon energy is about, what the full moon energy is about. And now let's talk about that um, eclipse, okay? So the eclipse um, eclipses out things from the past. and But like I said, with Aquarius, it's a choice for us. Um, it doesn't force it out this time. It has before, but it doesn't do that this time. It's a decision. So 
um, you have the opportunity times 12 to eclipse out past pain, hurt, betrayal, resentment, and then just be present in the moment and like experience joy and stuff and relief once we've gotten rid of that. So you might, like I said, get rid of a job. You might get rid of a car. You might move houses. Big changes. Um, now, what else did I want to say about that? With eclipses. You know, it's a time for new beginnings. And it's a time to raise our frequencies, our own vibrations, and put us on this new path. And like I said, you know, with that Leo energy, if you're able to just be a little bit selfish and focus on the things that you love and your vibration is higher, with that Aquarius abundance guarantee coming in, people are going to see that about you. You're going to be a better person. They're going to want to be more like you. They're going to want to spend time with you. They're going to want to throw their money at you. Okay? So excellent time to start a new business, basically, is what I wanted to say. Excellent time to start a new anything, but get on your life path. So, um... Let's see. So yeah, creativity play is going to be important. Hopefully you'll work a little bit less than you did in that Cancer Moon Capricorn new energy. Like those really strong two weeks of organization will make it easier in this month. So you have more time for joy, for fun, so that you're doing a better job of attracting things. If um, And sorry to bring it back to Patreon again, but if you are a Patreon member watching this, Make sure you go back and watch um, the two videos I shared on removing your abundance blocks that were important in the Capricorn New Moon um, energies. So, uh, thing is, you know, if you are really embracing your Empress qualities and you're being really nurturing to yourself, you can be more nurturing and mindful and present for everyone around you. Your kids are going to be happier and healthier, which is just going to make you happier and healthier because what stresses you out the most when you see them suffering, right? Same thing with your partner. So it's really, really important. Same thing for your friends. Um, so like I said, you need to be selfish first so that you can be mindful and more present in that Aquarius energy and be better to everybody else, changing yourself first to therefore change the world. So that message of karma in the Cancer Moon video, it's still true. Um, it has something to do with a south node energy, which means that losses and things um, are happening for a reason. And then, you know, with our decision, like I said, that can stay six months to three years. So um, something about it is that we're supposed to let go and get on these new enlightened paths. And so it's kind of like whatever... You know, like leading up to 2017 was total bullshit and fucked up for everybody. And then it was like, okay, yay, it's a new year. But it's like now in February is the start of the new year, really. It's like we didn't, we started, we started off optimistic and we felt good. And maybe last week we start to feel a little bit less good. And we're like, is this year really different? But it's like, this is the new year that we want. <laughs> like as far as energy goes, this blue moon, blood moon, in Leo, full moon, lunar eclipse, blah, blah, blah. This is like that energy of 